Welcome to another episode of IGCSC Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering the supplemental elements of section 3 of the syllabus movement in and out of cells. Now the first part of this section wants you to understand the different factors that affect the rate of diffusion. So there are four main factors are the surface area, temperature, concentration gradient and distance. Now surface area, the higher the um, area at which diffusion can occur on, the faster the rate of diffusion. Now, to diagram diagrammatically represent this, I've um, drawn a little diagram here. So if you take a look at this black line here, this represents uh, the area at which these red dots or these red molecules are, are diffusing through to the lower compartment. Okay, so what you need to think about is how many molecules at a given time can cross this barrier and diffuse. And if you align these molecules one by one, aligned, um, you can see that approximately four molecules at a given time can diffuse through this uh, through this barrier. Now, what what would happen if you were to double this area? So, if you double this black line like so, now you can see that eight molecules can fit through. So, you've essentially doubled um, the amount of molecules that can diffuse through this membrane uh, or through this barrier. And that leads to a doubling of the rate of diffusion. Okay. Uh, now the second one is temperature, and I've talked about how every molecule has something called kinetic energy um, that makes them constantly move um, and collide. So, because diffusion is essentially a net movement of molecules from one region to another region, because the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy of individual molecules, leading to higher speeds of those molecules, um, the diffusion rate is going to be higher because molecules, on average, just move much faster. And that increases uh, the rate of diffusion as a whole. Thirdly, we've got concentration gradient. And um, the higher the concentration gradient, uh, the faster the rate of diffusion. Now, once again, in a diagram, we've got case 1 and case 2. Case 1, on the left-hand side, you've got 5 molecules. On the right-hand side, you have 2. So there's a concentration gradient that goes from uh, the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Um, now, it's the same case for case 2, except the concentration gradient is much steeper in case 2. Now, what we find is that uh, diffusion is going to be much faster in the second case than the first, just because the concentration gradient is uh, steeper. Lastly, but not least, uh, distance. The smaller the distance in which molecules have to uh, travel through um, and diffuse through, the faster the rate. And that's pretty self-explanatory because, you know, uh, the lower the distance, um, the faster it is for molecules to get to wherever they want to get to through diffusion. Now, um, the second part of the section of the syllabus wants you to understand um, how cells behave when you put them in different concentrations of um, of uh, solutions. Okay, so there are two different scenarios. First of all, you immerse the cells in uh, pure water or like dilated solutions, or the second scenario where you put the cells in very concentrated solutions. So. What would what would happen if you put animal cells um, in these very pure or very dilated solutions? Well, first of all, you need to understand that um, in a very dilated solution, most likely it's going to have a higher water potential than inside the cell. Okay, and now that's because in the inside of the cell, uh, for both plants and animal cells, they have um, you know different stuff dissolved in it. For example, solutes. It could be glucose, salts. Or whatever, and that makes um, the water potential inside the cell lower than the outside. Now, remember, water flows from higher water potential to lower water potential. So, in this case, through osmosis, because you've got a partially permeable membrane, the cell, cell membrane of the cell, water is going to move by osmosis from the outside dilated solution into the cell. Okay, so it's going to the cells are going to intake water. Because animal cells don't have any rigidity in them, um, at a certain point, the cell is going to burst once it's taken in too much water. Um, but plant cells, because they have a very rigid cell wall, um, it's going to resist bursting. So when water moves into the cell, um, it's going to keep it nice and um, 
nice and inflated in a way. So it's gonna keep this turgid structure because of the fact that unlike um, unlike animal cells, it has a cell wall to keep them protected from bursting, um, even when a lot of water goes into the cell. Now what happens if you were to immerse the cells in concentrated solutions? Now if you have very concentrated solutions outside, most likely the water potential is going to be higher inside the cell than the outside, okay? Just because there are more solutes um, outside of the cell than inside. So because uh, because of osmosis, water is this time and this time um, gonna flow out of the cell into the solutions, okay? So the cells are gonna lose water, and uh, for an animal cell, it's gonna result in this flaccid-looking cell. It just means it's kind of it has this uh, deflated kind of structure because it's just lost so much water. Now, in plant cells, you've got um, you've got the same thing happening where water leaves the cell out into the solution, um, but because the cell walls of these plant cells are very rigid and inflexible, uh, the cell cytoplasm is going to shrink upon losing water. But if it shrinks too much then uh, these cell walls are not going to be able to follow it and eventually there's going to be tearing um, and detachment from the cytoplasm to the cell wall and that's what you call plasmolysis okay and that results in the death of the cell lastly uh, you need to know the uh, importance of active transport and i'm just going to use root hair cells as an example here let's just say um, uh, the the right side of the diagram where this um, extension is extending into is the soil and the left side is the roots um, and this black outline structure is the root hair cell which contains nutrients um, upon the absorption of um, nutrients in the soil and that's represented by these blue dots here and you can see that there are much more um, of these blue dots inside of the root hair cells already so there's a higher concentration concentration inside of the cell than the outside. Now, because the whole purpose of these root hair cells or roots of a plant is to absorb nutrients, you don't want um, nutrients flowing out into the soil through diffusion. Because uh, by the laws of diffusion, if you if they were to rely on diffusion alone, that's what would happen. Because there's a concentration gradient going from the inside to the outside. Uh, now, in this case, uh, because we well, they want to abs uh, maximize the uh, the absorption of nutrients, uh, they'll have to go against the concentration gradient and actively transport nutrients which are lower outside the soil into the uh, into the cell. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching once again, and um, I'll see you in the next video.